Welcome folks, my name is Richard Holizak. I'm uh, coming to you from Baruch College at the City University of New York, and I'm here to present to you a triangular arbitrage example. Um, so here you can see my uh, email address and my personal website. Uh, happy to hear your comments and thoughts on uh, this example, as well as many other materials in my blog are, are located on my uh, website. So um, the example I'm going to present today is basically based off of a, a article I wrote. Um, it was published in the summer of 2007 in the Journal of Financial Education. And it's basically one of the examples from that paper was looking at triangular arbitrage. Um, if this is your first time looking at foreign exchange quotes and uh, foreign exchange trading, probably what you'll want to do is go and uh, take a little bit of a refresher on how foreign exchange quotes are presented. I can recommend the Investopedia University has a, a nice little section of articles, at least the first three there, that talk a little bit about um, what the foreign exchange market is and how quotes are presented, and specifically how to read a foreign exchange quote and to, uh, what the difference is between the bid and the ask for a foreign exchange quote. So you basically kind of need those to, to get going with an example like this. All right, so let's get started. In general, an arbitrage is going to involve simultaneously buying and selling financial instruments in either uh, the same market or different markets in such a way that uh, the pricing arrangement ensures that you have a riskless profit. In our case, our example here, we're going to demonstrate something called triangular arbitrage using foreign exchange, where we're basically taking three currencies and we're trading from the first currency to the second, from the second to the third, and then from the third back to the first. Um, if pricing, that is the bid and the ask prices uh, for these three currencies are aligned or we should say mispriced in a certain way, one could enjoy a riskless profit. All right, so what was my motivation? The motivation for this example came from a particular uh, textbook. I just happened to be flipping through, and actually if you look at just about any international finance textbook, um, even on Wikipedia, you'll see examples of triangular arbitrage, and they typically follow something along these lines. Here we begin with $5 million, um, assuming you have that laying around, most of us do. You can take your $5 million US dollars, uh, and using a US dollar to euro uh, quote can convert that to an equivalent number of euros. Based on that number of euros then, you can then convert those euros into British pounds. So again, using a quote there, we convert it to an equivalent in British pounds. Then finally, we take those British pounds and we convert them back to US dollars. And uh, in this particular example, we kind of sum it all up and we see that there is uh, roughly a $17,000 uh, arbitrage profit. And this is a riskless profit because um, we've basically not risked anything. We've just done a series of three transactions and the pricing is aligned or mispriced, I should say, in such a way that this arbitrage um, is profitable. Okay, so that was the textbook example that inspired me those and a few others and so what I figured was let's take a look at some live data we've got these wonderful uh, tools from Thomson Reuters and from Bloomberg and others and let's essentially just replace these um, cells with instead of hard coding in quotes why don't we make them actual prices so the uh, live data column here is basically taking the same numbers and the same formulas and we're just going to replace these shaded cells with live quotes. So the first thing that we're going to need is, um, I'm going to bring it up over here in a second, is we're going to need a euro quote. So the, again, the first step is going to be to sell our US dollars and buy some euros. Now, here's again where it, it helps if you've had a little bit of a background in um, the way in which foreign exchange is quoted. So here I'm looking through our, our Thomson Reuters icon system at the euro quote that they provide. And the first thing to notice is that the quote they provide for the euro is a direct quote from the European perspective. And so it's actually inverted from what we need. We need selling our US dollars to buy euro. Here they've got it inverted. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to essentially invert this quote that Reuters gives us. And the way we do that is, you know, ultimately we want to end up with a bid. And so we're going to take the reciprocal of the ask price. So one divided by this 1.3418, that's going to give us our, um, our bid price uh, in its inverted form. So again, one of the cool things we can do with this is if you grab the asking price, so I'm holding down my mouse button here on the asking price, you can see it sort of turns into a little plus sign. I can bring that over and I'm just gonna drop it right here on my live data spreadsheet. Now, again, that's the asking price of the inverted quote. And so what I need to do is I'm going to need to, um, to invert that. So I'll just hit F2 to edit my cell. Let me move this down here a little bit. And what I'm gonna add in front of it is a one, and then I'm gonna divide that by my, again, this will be the asking price. So the formula that Reuters gives us, rtget is a real-time get function. IDN is the name of the data feed that we're pulling this data from. EUR equals is what's called the Reuters instrument code for the Euro USD quote. And then ask is the field that I'm interested in. They will also use things like primary activity and secondary activity. They're just basically synonyms. Here we want the ask. I want to make it very clear. We're inverting the ask price. Okay. That gives us a bunch of decimal places. Maybe I will, um, I'll just cut down the number of decimal places so it doesn't look so, uh, so obnoxious there. Okay. So essentially what we've done here again is we've, we've from Reuters taken the Euro USD ask price uh, and then inverted it, which gives us a USD Euro bid that we've synthesized. And so we've taken our 5 million US dollars and then just doing the multiplication, you can see the formula up here, H4 times H3, gives us our equivalent in euros. So that's gonna be our first leg, if you will, of the triangle. The next step we need to do is to take these euros and convert them into British pounds. And fortunately, um, this is a very common transaction in the market, and so what we can do is have Reuters give us the uh, cross quote, as it's called, uh, euro to British pounds. And we see that it's got a bid price that's all ready to go for us. So again, I'm just going to grab that bid price with my mouse, turns into a plus sign. I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to drop it right on. Um, again, it's going to give me kind of this weird primary activity one field. I'm just going to go over that and I'm going to call it the bid price. Okay, so again, ultimately what we want is a real-time price from the IDN data feed. Here's the Reuters instrument code, EURGBP, and we're looking at the bid price there. So those are the first two steps. Five million converted with our synthesized um, or inverted uh, bid gives us euros. Take those euros and convert them again to British pounds. And again, I'm going to just make this a consistent, uh, say, four decimal places so we can compare things. All right, we're almost there. Let me move this up. The last leg of our journey is going to be taking our British pounds. We're going to sell those pounds, and we're going to buy back our U.S. dollars. And uh, because we're selling the pounds, again, we need a GBP USD bid price, which we're going to drop here uh, in cell H10. Fortunately, when we're going this direction, even though the um, British pound quote is uh, inverted from the U.S. perspective, it's actually in the right orientation. It's the, from the right direction for the trade that we need to do. So we have our pounds. Uh, we need to sell those pounds and buy back U.S. dollars. And so we've got the bid lined up here. We're just going to grab that, drag it over, and drop it down. And now we've got our three live quotes. So I can move my quote off the screen here, and we can see it rolling in action. So again, just a simple multiplication to get the equivalent back in US dollars. We're subtracting off our initial investment, and lo and behold, there's a loss. Okay, why is there a consistent loss here? Well, each time we do one of these foreign exchange transactions, we're essentially crossing the spread. We're crossing over 
to the bid side because again, first we're selling our US dollars to buy euros, then we're selling our euros to buy British pounds, and we're selling our pounds to buy back our US dollars. And so again, each time we sell, we're crossing over to that bid price, and that essentially gives us a bit of a loss. We're losing the spread. And when we do that three times in a row, we end up with an overall loss. Now, notice that the losses are not consistent. And this is something that I talked about uh, in the beginning, Right now, it seems like prices are fairly efficient. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Occasionally, we're going to see a situation where the prices are misaligned or mispriced, if you will. And that may very briefly, for a second, open up an arbitrage opportunity. Now, what I did, just to sort of highlight that on this last cell here, cell H14, I have made a conditional formatting piece on it so that uh, it will flash green when we see an arbitrage opportunity. The second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have ready the alt print screen key. This is a way of taking a picture of the screen and so what we'll do is when we see this arbitrage profit I'll hold down alt tap print screen and then we can paste that into a word or something like that. We can then write up our example and show a little bit about why that arbitrage profit happened. So again, when we see arbitrage profit, it's going to be very, very fleeting. It will only last for about a second, and then it'll probably go very quickly back to a loss. So at this point, I'm going to let this cook, and we'll come back in a few minutes once we see a little bit of profit. Okay, so here we see a couple of nice little profits that just snuck by us. Uh, I think I got the picture of one of them. Let me switch over to Microsoft Word and let me paste in the picture that I took. Ah, good, I got one of the good ones here. So, again, I did that by uh, looking at the spreadsheet, waiting for the a profit to show up there. I hit alt print screen very, very quickly. We got a couple of nice profits right in a row, so I figure I would, uh, would take a couple of pictures, and here we have it. So what's happened here? It looks like, I'm going to switch back to kind of take a look, 542, it looks like the uh, USD Euro quote ticked up a bit, as did the Euro Great British Pound quote and the British Pound to USD quote ticked down at this kind of this around the same time here. So again this is a situation where there was a bit of a mispricing in the market and uh, we see here there is some riskless profit. So probably another way that we could uh, we could explore this would be to do some real-time graphs and maybe look at these bid prices as they're cooking along and sort of see where the misalignment might have occurred. Um, we'll go back to the live shot here and again these arbitrage profits will be very very fleeting. Uh, main reason for that is if there is actually arbitrage to be had someone will probably engage in those three transactions and that will immediately cause all of these international banks that participate here to readjust their quotes. So that's basically what's happening here. We got a little bit lucky. We didn't have to wait too, too long. I've done this example where we've gotten, like that example there, consistent profits, or showing consistent profit uh, again and again. And I've run it other times, other times of days other times in history and we see no profit at all for a very very long time and so this is actually not too shabby we're seeing little little tiny bits of profit um, kind of flashing up here um, so that kind of makes the example a little bit exciting and frankly it gets dull when there's absolutely no profit and you stare at it for a while all right so how else could we uh, play around with this well obviously we could take three different currencies and set up the same exact uh, triangle uh, setup and see if there are arbitrage opportunities that pop up with any of these other uh, currency triads. You can also 
uh, do more than three currencies. You can do a four currency arbitrage or a five currency arbitrage. It's, it's really just kind of following the same basic mechanics each time selling out to the bid price um, as you go around and then ending up back in your original currency. So um, I'm going to call it quits for now. Again, hope you enjoyed this presentation. Happy to hear uh, of your comments and suggestions. And uh, we'll look forward to posting some more examples soon.